Good morning, everybody. Victor here. I'm with my babe, Brookie. Hi, guys. From Brook Christ Outdoors. If you guys don't know her, I'll have her channel link below. Now, Brooke and I have four goals today. We are trying to film four videos in one day. She doesn't think it's gonna happen, I do. Number one, we're gonna go and net some glass minnows, also called anchovies. Gonna do a catch and cook with those. Then we're gonna go and try to chum up a bunch of poundfish needlefish slash goggle eye. And Brooke's gonna drop down like a chicken rig or a little snapper rig and see whatever she catches. Whatever she's gonna catch, she's gonna cook. So, if you guys saw the B-roll playing on the screen, that means we knocked off all four. If you didn't see it, we probably didn't do it, but we'll see you out of the inlet and out in the ocean. Should be it. Should be one and done. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we got him. Ready? Oh my goodness. That is a lot of anchovies. See, just with one throw, we got basically a five gallon bucket full. This is what these things look like. I'm pretty sure it's a bay anchovy. There's not much information about them online. I've done one other video where Brooke and I cast netted them off the beach. They, everyone calls them glass minnows. Everybody says the glass minnow run. It happens every year in the summertime from Miami all the way to Port Canaveral, I believe. All over the beaches, you can find these things this time of year. So what we're gonna do with them, we're gonna bag some up to eat. We're gonna bag some up to take to try to catch some needlefish, some gogs with it, and it just makes really good chum. Instead of going to the store and buying it, we can bag it up, because they sell this stuff and it's expensive. It's not cheap. But they are extremely slimy, scaly. I am gonna show you guys how to process these, because you have to remove all the scales and stuff. We're gonna give them a nice little slurry, remove all the scales. So I'm gonna go ahead, get to bagging. One more thing. So the last time I filmed a glass minnow video, I did not have a glass minnow net. In all of those hundreds and hundreds of baits that we just cast netted, this is what you call a gilled bait. Is when their little heads poking out of the net like that, that's because the mesh is too big, just big enough to where they can get out, but they can't escape fully, and that's not good. The last time I did this, the entire net was a Christmas tree. Brooke and I spent like about an hour trying to get it out. It was insane. So that's why these nets are really expensive. Like this net was almost 300 bucks because it has tiny little mesh, 3 16 inch mesh. So they have to use that much more material to make these nets. And that's why they're so expensive and they're hard to come by too. Not a lot of tackle shops carry them. So Brooke and I came in already, cleaned up all the minnows and I really wanted to get underwater and show you guys exactly what the glass minnows are all about because it is pretty incredible the amount of fish and life that surround the school so hopefully they're still there i don't see why where they would have gone but I'm gonna go underwater with the gopro get some cool shots for you guys Okay, so we got four bags of our anchovies. I'm only gonna cook up one bag at the very most. And this is the way that I've cleaned them in the past and it worked out good for us. You take a few, put them in a colander, right? 
So let's put about that many in a colander. We're gonna put this in our bag because you do not want these to spoil, that would be bad. So last time I did this, I picked apart every single head and gut. I'm not doing this this time. Everybody said it is, it's nonsense, it's not needed. So this time we're leaving the heads and guts on. These fish are so small that I think that's the customary way to eat it. So you got your colander, you got a hose. Now, I'm just gonna kind of toss them around in here with the hose and kind of move them around. And what I'm trying to do here, what I'm trying to do with this is you see all that kind of like sudsy stuff and my hands are going to be covered in scales after this. Scales are what you're trying to knock off. If there's any little bits of seaweed, where we netted them, there was a lot of seaweed and it's kind of inevitable to get in the net. So I'm just kind of filtering them, cleaning them. But one of the main things that I'm trying to do is get rid of all those scales. And hopefully when this water runs through here and it's all nice and clear, you guys will see all the scales at the bottom of the bucket. So I don't want to be too aggressive because these guys are very fragile. Like, look, I can rip them apart just like that. You don't want to be too aggressive. But look at this. They look all nice and clean and innocent, but look at that. That is the water that I filtered out of there. That is straight muck. It is gross. It's not even brown or gray. It just looks like filth. So we're going to do this. We're going to get rid of it. And I'm going to keep doing this until the water in the bucket is clear and until I'm comfortable enough to where I think that they're gonna be safe to eat and also just pleasant to eat. You, you don't wanna fry them up or eat them when that water's all nasty like that. So this is the second round and you can see it's already getting clearer, but it's still really dirty. If you guys look in the water, you see all that little shimmering and glitter? That's all tiny little baby scales that we're knocking off. And I think that's why they're such a good bait fish is because things just see them from a mile away and they look like a little disco ball underwater. But Brooks Canal is literally covered in scales right now. So we've repeated that process about three times now. And Brooke had a good idea. She got a little bucket of water. The Chris, colander. Crystal clear. Let's see what happens. Oh boy, we still need more. <laughs> you know, we might be overthinking it, but this is only the second time I've ever done it, so you want a nice clean product, especially if you're serving it to friends and family. You don't want to freak them out with a dirty little anchovy, you know? Don't freak us out with a dirty anchovy. Yeah, that's a good idea, bro. This is why they pay me the big bucks. You excited to eat some saltwater french fries? Absolutely. So last time we took the heads off. I'm not taking the heads off this time. Oh, we're, we're not gonna, rookies anymore. We're gonna get adventurous, huh? Mm -hmm. See, look at the water now. It's barely dirty. Yep. We got a clean Ziploc bag we're gonna put it in. Okay. All right. We but got more than this, right? Oh yeah, we got lots more. Oh, you could eat that yourself. I, I could eat that many. <laughs> okay, I wanted to show you guys the difference of a before and after in case you want to do this yourself. This is unprocessed, uncleaned. They still have all their scales on them. This is all cleaned. They kind of firm up when they hit that fresh water. See, I don't have any scales. Watch this, look, I'll run my hand through there. I don't have any scales on my fingers. Watch what happens when I put my hands in here. Covered in scales. So that's what you're trying to get rid of. The scales, the slime, all that seaweed, anything that's in there, that way you have a nice finished anchovy product. So Brooke and I went back to the inlet. You guys already saw the dive footage. It was not as clear as I'd liked it to be. A few days ago, the tarpon, the snook, everything, it was crystal clear and that's what I wanted to get for you guys. But that's not the way it always happens. We got ran out by a bunch of storms today so could not go back for a third time. But um, these are our anchovies. I did rinse them one more time because when they sat in the bag for two hours, all that blood and just juicy gut water accumulated. So I went ahead and rinsed them one more time. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take some all-purpose flour. Okay. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to make enough 
for all of the uh, anchovies in there. Some all-purpose flour, whatever is left of cornstarch in here. Of course, garlic powder, paprika, some chili powder, and I'm sure you could fry these whole without adding any flour and they would probably get nice and crispy, but I think that adding some flour cornstarch mixture definitely helps. Some onion powder, black pepper, salt, and we're gonna hit them with another salt bath one more time, right, at, right as they come out of the fryer. We put the lid on. Shake. So we're gonna go ahead and just dump these in here. And I did have them drying on a paper towel because I don't want them wet. I want them to crisp up nice. So they need to be nice and dry. Heads and all tonight, baby. This is definitely adventurous for us. I've never eaten an entire fish with all the guts, the head, everything intact, the bones and all. But these fish are so small that the bones, they can't do any harm to you. They're little, they're little. The coffin has been shut. There's no going back now. Now we kind of just toss them around. And like I said earlier, you don't want to be too aggressive with these guys because they're pretty fragile. Shake it around town. Woo! There they are. Check them out. This is what they look like. No flowers dripping off of them. All right, so we're out here. We got the Camp Chef sidekick, Dutch oven, peanut oil, medium heat. And we're going straight into the oil. And I like to move them around a little bit, otherwise they clump up together. All right, so we're taking the very first batch off. Now we have some people here who have had these before, and we have some people here who have never had them before. So it's gonna be interesting to see what people think. I just tried one, and personally, I think that with the head on and the guts, they were even less fishy than last time. Mm -hmm. Look at this. I'm not sure yet. Oh, mm. wow, look at this. Oh, that's, wow. That's too many to try on the first time. <laughs> what does it taste like? Wow, it's a little bit scary. The first time we had they didn't have heads on them. And that was not scary at all. No. This time, but you eat the, whole thing. the whole thing. This time you're eating the eyeballs and the heads. And they're really seasoned, so. And they have flowers, so they're right, supposed Oh man. <laughs> Try one, pull it apart, pull it apart. <laughs> yeah, don't go for a chunk. Here, if you want, you want, start off with the sauce. This is like a ranch. This is like a Chipotle ranch and this is like a, a chili, lime, scallion, cilantro sauce. Oh, it's not bad. No. You like it? You do? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Check it out, guys. Last time we had no dipping sauces, no lemon, nothing. This time we have a little buttermilk ranch chipotle and then a lime, cilantro, chili sauce. Dig in. Dig in. Salt. Candace, what do you think? That's what they're missing. That's what they're missing is salt. Yeah. They look like little lizards. <laughs> you can taste the fish more this time. We forgot to salt them. It's a sin with seafood. You gotta salt your seafood. Look at that. <laughs> it's delicious, it really is. The heads, not fishy whatsoever. The guts, not fishy whatsoever. No bone. I mean, there's bone in there, but you guys see, I just devoured a ball of them, and they. How about you, Deb? I had a few. Not bad at all. But he delicious. Should have said guts. You're all natural. I'm just trying to really 
consume these little eyeballs and heads and do what it's really all about. Because last time, when we took the heads off, we got some comments like, oh, what'd you take the heads off for? We don't take the heads off. So here we are, eating them with the heads on. And um, the, the flavor is a little stronger, but good. Okay, so last time, I honestly didn't really like them. They were, I thought they were super fishy, and I'm just not someone who likes really fishy things. Jed loves like canned anchovies and canned sardines and things like that. So he absolutely loves these. And I didn't like them last time, but I actually really enjoy them this time. I don't know why, which is weird because it has the head and the guts. And last time we spent like an hour or more taking the heads and guts off. And this time it has both. And for some reason, <laughs> I like it more. It seems like such a weird thing, but it's so good. I, I actually feel lucky to be eating these things because everybody that watches these videos knows I'm, I'm eating at a house where we try everything. And there's so many squeamish people out there that think that things don't taste good. And I just feel lucky to be eating here and, and look what we're trying. We're trying these little minnows that swim in the surf and they're terrific. Uh, it, it's the spice of life. Gabby and I, this is our first time trying it. We didn't get to try them last time. And they tasted good. They, they don't, they definitely taste much better than they look. And I think that's the only thing really keeping me back is the texture and the look. Because the, if you close your eyes and just imagine eating french fries with, and the dips they made, they actually taste really good. But I don't think I would ever order them if I went out. But they are, they are, they're, they're pretty delicious. I just, there's something stopping me from loving them. Looking at the eyeballs staring at you. A I lot think that's of all. Eyeballs. I think that all. That's all it is. Is I'm just not used to eating fish, where you see the eyeballs and the, and the little, uh, what the, the bones and such. So I think that's the only thing, because they don't taste that bad. I think I just have to get more used to it or something. I know you love them. I love these things. They're like candy. I wish we could get them year round. I do like them. They're really good. They. Just aren't my favorite, but they're like french fry. I would eat them again. So the last time we had these was basically a year ago because the um, minnow run comes around once a year. And I feel like I've also changed a lot in my mindset in the last like couple years and even more in this last like year. You guys always see us do like trash fish um, catch and cook videos. So I've tried a lot of trash fish that people would normally think are bad and they've been absolutely delicious. So I don't know if it also was in my head last time that I just thought it was gross and weird. <laughs> and this time here I am eating the heads and I like it more this time. So I don't know if it was in my mind or if I really just think that these taste better, but I think they're absolutely delicious. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> I think your perspective has changed. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> my mindset, my perspective. Your palate has changed. Yeah. I I like the fact that um, they come around seasonally. You know, you'd get bored of them if you ate them all year long. Season comes, you look forward to eating these um, these beach anchovies, and then when lobster season comes, you get the lobsters. Dolphin season, you eat the dolphin. Just follow everything from season to season. It's so much fun. What? Are you some? Try this one. So, this is the third or fourth batch, and I've been experimenting with the fry times. I thought I was frying them long enough, but I guess not. Especially when you put in so many. The longer you fry them, the crispier they get. I think they're much better this time. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, they were good before. They're different now. Mm -hmm. They're different. I'm going to turn into an ASMR channel. <laughs> So we've made like four or five batches now and it's funny because the first batch Fisher and Gabby weren't crazy about them. The last batch I put in a lot of flour, fried them up until they're super crispy and he said it's his favorite one. So if you have a bunch of people in your group, try a bunch of different ways, different fry times, different amounts of flour, cornstarch, just experiment with it. But eight people, we all, it wasn't just like 
oh, I'll eat it. We all enjoyed it, you know? You might not order at a restaurant, but everyone enjoyed it. And like Brian said, there's a season for everything, and that's what the ocean's all about. You don't have to target one thing. Get what's in season. Enjoy it with your friends and family. That's all there is to it. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, and I'll catch you guys in that next.